You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Monday afternoon, February 26th, the last Monday in February as we roll towards March. Unbelievable. Time flies by. So you are listening to Conroe Culture News at Montgomery County uh, Community Radio, uh, Lone Star Community Radio in downtown Conroe, FM 104.5, 106.1. And I am your host, Margie Taylor, for the next hour. My guests today include Marita Kilgore. She's with the Players Theater Company, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about their newest production at the Owen Theater coming up. And then we have Don Hampton. He's the event chair of the Rising Stars and Legends of Texas. And Susie Pekarski, who is uh, directing the Young Texas Artist Music Competition. What do these all have in common? The Rising Stars and Legends of Texas week-long event. Of course, some of these things carry on past that, which will be the next performance that's going to be at the Owen Theater, which we will talk about very shortly. And this show is sponsored by Kristen Bays for the 284th Court of Montgomery County. So a little bit about what's going on around us in Conroe. So the Isaac Conroe Farmer's Market is normally the first Thursday of the month, which would be this Thursday is March 1st. But it is being canceled right now to get more vendors to participate in the third annual Shakespeare Festival, which will take place on Saturday, March 24th at Founders Plaza Park. So that will be a fun event. Uh, The Conroe Farmer's Market will continue as a partner to the first Thursday concert, which will begin April 5th and go through the first Thursday in September. So we're going to have just one big party until, instead of two small parties that are two blocks apart. It just, it just makes more sense. So let me tell you about the Shakespeare Festival. It is the third annual festival, and the last two have been in October, although we didn't have it last October because everybody was still trying to recover from Harvey and things like that. So this is a free event scheduled uh, from 9 to 6 at Founders Plaza Park, and it's presented by the Conroe Downtown Area Association. And there's going to be some local performances by the uh, schools and uh, the drama and English classes. There are going to be community volunteers that have been rehearsing Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and the headliner performance of the Merry Wives of Windsor. Of course, this is all free, and you can go to their Facebook event page. Just Google Conroe Shakespeare Festival or go to Experience Downtown Conroe Facebook page and find out more about it. They're still looking for vendors. So if you're interested in being a vendor for uh, the Shakespeare Festival, you can find the application on experiencedowntownconroe.com. So what else is going on? Oh, the, by the way, they're also having a live sword fight demonstration during the Shakespeare Festival. Okay, when was the last time you saw that happen? Uh, prop- hopefully not lately, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, although it is election season, so I don't know what's going on. But uh, again, uh, that's the March 24th on Saturday from 9 to 6 will be that uh, festival, free for everyone. So what I don't want you to forget about, though, is the Rising Stars and Legends of Texas. That's kind of going to be the theme for today's show. But the Texas Tenors will be performing at the Crichton Theater March 4th, and I believe it's almost a sellout. So they are the Texas Tenors. They have won uh, three Emmy Awards for their performances, and they will be accompanied by members of the Conroe Symphony Orchestra. So there's going to be a a lot of activity, and we will talk more about that when we bring on Don Hampton, the second guest. But there will be performances by Debbie Glenn, who runs the Red Brick Tavern, Cecil Shaw with Rhythm and Blues, the Montgomery County Choral Society, the Crichton Kids Radio Show, Jazz Connection, Poetry Readings, Poetry Slam, uh, things going on with the Conroe, Montgomery County Literary Arts Society, a documentary about Bonnie and Clyde from Stage Right, the Woodland Show Chorus, local dance companies. Uh, There's going to be music in the park on Friday night. And then also we will see the first performance of 
the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. That's a mouthful. But we will hear more about that from our first guest, Marita Kilgore, who's directing that performance. So most of these events are free, except for the uh, first event, which is with the Texas Tenors, and the ending event, which we will hear more about with Susie Pekarski. And that is the Young Texas Music Musicians Competition. And they start with a gala Saturday, March the 10th, and end with the competition performance at the Crichton Theater starting at 7 p.m. on March the 10th. So, what else is going on? Well, there's an Elvis tribute, Best Thing, Next Best Thing to the King, performed on Friday night, March 2nd, with music, shaking, rocking, and rolling, and you can imagine with Elvis Presley impersonator. And then Saturday night, there's going to be Night of One Acts, performed by local junior high drama students from Brabham, Lynn Lucas, from those are Willis schools, and Magnolia Junior High and all proceeds will benefit their local school drama departments. So other things that are going on this week, Friday, Friday night, Manzi Towery will be at the Red Brick Tavern, Ryan Davis will be at the Corner Pub, Midnight River Choir will be at Pacific Yard House, and next best thing to the King, Crichton Theater, Saturday night, Gary Kyle at the Red Brick Tavern, Texas Johnny Boy at the Corner Pub, Austin Mead at Pacific Yard House, and Night of One X at the Crichton Theater. And ending the week will, of course, be Gospel Sunday Brunch, and that has uh, Jim Sloan Trio playing at the Red Brick Tavern. And, of course, that starts our wonderful Rising Stars and Legends of Texas with the Texas Tenors. So if you're interested in that, you need to hurry and go get tickets because there's just limited seating available. So we're going to take a quick ba break. Sorry, I'm tongue-tied today. And uh, my name is Margie Taylor, and this is sponsored by Kristen Bays of the 284th Court of Montgomery County. I'm Kristen Bays, and I'm running for judge of the 284th Civil District Court. Ronald Reagan once said, as government expands, liberty contracts. He's right, but there are leaders in this country who seem to have forgotten it. I'm running for judge to stop this government expansion, to restore your confidence in your elected officials. I'm inspired, involved, and invested in this community, and I know you are too. Together, we can make a difference. Please vote for Kristen Bays in the Republican primary on March 6th. Political advertising paid for by Kristen Bays and in voluntary compliance with the Judicial Campaign Fairness Act. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, check out the Ticket Stub Podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. Remember to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on your computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. Lone Star Community Radio broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. And we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News at Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, on this beautiful Monday afternoon in February. So we are rolling on to our first guest today, and that is Marita Kilgore. She is with the Players Theater Company, and she is going to talk to us about their next performance. Welcome, Marita. You. Good to be here. Yes, it is. So, uh, how long have you been involved with the Players Theater Company? Since 1997, I started when we were over here at the Crichton. So it's oh been my goodness! 20 years. Wow. Year. So, how long has the Owen Theater been there? Uh, a while. Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. 
So it's much newer, if people don't know. It's much newer than the Crichton Theater. It is. It's a and smaller venue. It's a smaller venue, but now we have, a, well, we've had two theater companies for quite a while. Um, but your next performance that's coming up will be the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Yes. Tell me about that. It's a little bit different than most comedies and most musicals, because it is a musical. There's an awful lot of singing in this. There's not the choreography and dancing that you would see, like in West Side Story or something. But the difference in this particular comedy musical is that you have audience participation. So four audience members are called up every night to become randomly. Part of, well, they're <laughs> vetted. They are vetted before okay, the show. Okay, okay, because so otherwise that could be crazy. It could be. <laughs> um, no, Carrie Edwards is my AD, and she will be. Um, getting those volunteers and vetting them before each of the shows. So those names will be called at the start as part of the program, and they are called up on stage. They receive a number, and they sit down, and they participate as spellers. As spellers. As they don't have to spellers. sing and dance, do they? They do not. Okay, no, they, okay, because that would be a little frightening. <laughs> they are pretty, I sh wait a minute, I shouldn't say that. Oh, okay. There is one little scene that they have to get up, and they do have to participate in, but they're not required yeah. to do any sort of choreography. Okay, so people need to know that, but they can always say no if they they're can. asked. They can. So. And we try to have two men and two women, um, a younger and an older one for each performance. So you've got a little assortment up there. You know, we hope that that the audience will vote for their friends and neighbors, you know, as you have buses that come in and bring host of people, we'll try to pull someone from that bus load okay. so that they'll be able to root for the ones they're that are riding home. On right, <laughs> right, right. So they're actually spelling words. They will be spelling words, yes. And each show sounds like it's going to be a little different. Every show is different. This particular show is allowed and expected to do an, a lot of ad lib performance with it because you just have that unexpected bit that's going to come from anyone that might be up there participating. Okay. In fact, for, during auditions, I did have my my auditioners do an entire ad lib skit. They were just given a topic and three at a time, and I had them perform. How did that go? It was great. It was so much fun. In fact, if you ask them, that was the most fun they've ever had at auditions. It's really relaxing, but they had no idea what I was going to throw at them. Uh, and <laughs> Watch out for Marita. That's right. It was, it was an awful lot of fun, but I felt like it was necessary because this show requires the ad-libbing. Okay. And I wanted to see how quick everyone was on their feet. So it's going to be very humorous and witty. It is a very funny show. It's truly, a, from the moment that it starts, you have six pre-adolescent, adolescent kids and three adults that are the cast itself, who the adults try to corral this chaotic bee, and the children all have their own set ideas of how things should be, and you have flashback scenes, uh, dream sequences of how they got to where they are, you know, what their family life was, or just their story behind it, and that's what makes it all so fun, just getting into that and listening to the ad-libs. Of course, that's new for me every night when I'm during rehearsals with I hear what they're saying. It's like, oh, my, how exciting. Have you had a lot of fun with this? We have. We've had a whole lot of fun. I, this is the best show for me to to just do my directorial debut with. I mean, I saw it on Broadway, and it was what I wanted to bring to Conroe. I knew that I, this particular stage is set specifically for this type of a show. And so I was truly thrilled when they said, okay, we're going to bring it, and you can direct it. So, I'll try so how does that work? How do you get chosen as the director? Well, you need to have met quite a few qualifications first. You need to have needed to have done a lot of stuff with the theater. You need to have experience uh, as an assistant director or stage manager. You need to have worked behind the scenes. You need to know how things go along and, and prove yourself and your ability to perform. And then there's an application that you fill out uh, at the Owen. And then, of course, each season when the new shows are selected there's just that vetting process of who would what director would be best for each particular show so you never know if you're going to get a show or not and uh, i was just thankful that so it's tailorized to the performance yes ma'am oh that segue <laughs> there yes it is <laughs> well it sounds like a lot of fun and i know that uh 
uh, it takes a lot of time, and you're passionate about what you do. So tell me about the people involved with the play. They're all volunteers, right? And they put in a lot of time to do these things. Every person with this particular play is a volunteer, yes. Um, we have a music director, and that happens to be uh, Robert, who has done work with West Side Story. He won the Monty for that. He's done quite a few things along the way. And he has been just a blessing in, able, in enabling me to move forward with it. Because with a musical, you have so much of the script that perhaps is part of the songs. And Spelling Bee is one of the most strict songs strict song slash scripts I've seen because he has to dictate the music to the script itself and they have to perform their words and their dialogue for a lot of the time to the music. So it has to be syncopated with that. Wow. So it is. Uh, so it's challenging. It is challenging. And, and that was one of the things when uh, after I had set the cast, it's like, okay, people who have seen this show and a lot of people don't know what Spelling Bee is about. They might have heard of it, but many of them haven't. It is a, an, a Tony Award-winning show, but many people just haven't heard about it. Um, the ones who know the songs think, oh, they're so catchy, and they're so fun. And then they get to look at the music. It's like, good gracious, it's very complex. The harmonies are difficult. It's not nearly as simple as they thought it was going to be. So... They have, my cast has come along very nicely in, in doing that, and I do have a wonderful cast. We have um, Haley Reynolds is uh, my, my female lead. She and Jason Roca, who plays Douglas Panch, and she plays Rona Lisa Peretti. They are the adults who move this play along, and Jason has never done a play of any kind at all anywhere, and he came to audition because he just needed something to do and challenge himself. Something to do. Something to do and challenge himself. <laughs> he had been voted, when he was in school, he was voted funniest. Uh, so he wanted to kind of give it a try. And he was brought back for callbacks because of the ad-lib skit that I had him do. And okay. he was so incredible in that. It's like, okay, we're going to call you back. It was because of that. And uh, I've been so pleased. They moved the, the show along very well. They do have to do more ad-libs than anyone else. And... Uh, but, you know, he's our, he's our theater virgin who's never done a single Never thing. done a thing. So do you have more people than just him that have never performed before? No, everyone has done something. We do have new people to this show. Haley Reynolds, uh, who I said is Ron Lisa, has never done anything with the Owen or the Crichton before. And we have some younger ones who are just stepping up, coming into to this thing. Uh, Ellie Brenda Marte is our youngest actress, and she's only 14, but this is her first show to, to have a big feature in that's an adult show. And uh, we have uh, Lauren, uh, what is Lauren's last name? Upshaw. Okay, there oh, you go. <laughs> there you go, Lauren Upshaw. <laughs> and she's played background and uh, just smaller pieces. Every one of the, the characters have a very featured piece. They have a very specific solo they do. Uh, we have Ethan Garcia, who plays William Barfay, Madison, uh, Mon I'll get back to Madison's last name in a minute, uh, Nico Montalvo, who plays Chip Tolentino and plays the most electrifying song that you will hear on stage for this show. The show is known for just a couple of things, and that is one of them, his particular solo. Okay, so you're making it sound really exciting. It is very exciting. Have you been selling tickets already? Uh, yes, my understanding is that uh, as soon as the tickets went on sale, we had you know put quite a few in the in the slot for sale. But uh, this show runs four weekends, so if you have season ticket holders, most season ticket holders have their their shows picked out for the first three weeks because you can't guarantee a show a non a non musical only performs three weeks. So that last week is almost always open. You really that's where you really need to put some some seats. And you need to really make some sales for your final. And most show. of your shows are three weeks, aren't they? All non-musicals are three weeks. Okay. And it, this coming season, all of our musicals will be three weekends. But for right now, finishing out this season. That's fabulous. That gives more opportunities. It does. Although it probably tires out the performers a little bit. <laughs> well, you still put in 
A musical will, will do 10 shows, um, and a non-musical is eight. But with that musical doing four weeks, you do have it spread out more. So they can be a little more exhausted. Uh, but for next season, they will all be put into three weeks. And so they may be more exhausted that way, too. It's like, just keep your energy <laughs> up every single solitary day. Have fun. <laughs> Learn your lines. I, I would like to try that sometime, but... I don't know if I'd have the time. I don't know if I could do it. Sure you could. I mean, look, we've got we've got somebody who is a, that theater virgin. Everyone starts out somewhere. Come in and do a little bit part. You can always work in just the chorus or work in the background and get your feet wet. Even the most, even someone who you would never think would step out and, and do anything, if they're if they've just got a small walk on part. And the director says, okay, I'm going to give you this line, this one line. And they say their one line. That pretty much is it. That solidifies them. The next time they want more lines. And then, okay. <laughs> then you've got someone who wants to be the star on the stage. Of course. <laughs> I would just think it would be hard to memorize all the lines. That would be the hardest part, I think. I found that when I first started out, everyone used uh, cassette tapes. And so you, had, you could record it and you could listen back on a little tape player. Well, now those are almost non-existent. So I have found it it's a little more difficult because that technology isn't what people are using anymore. So hmm. now it's like, okay, read it, read it, read it, and have someone read with you. So true. As opposed to just sitting in the car and listening to yourself on the on your cassette tape. True, true. That would be boring. So they can go and get tickets at owentheater.com, and it is the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Yes, it is. Your directorial <laughs> debut. Yes, ma'am. And it's going to be amazing, yes. <laughs> yes, and it starts um, that March, week. March of, the 9th. Yes. We will be having our fa friends and family night, which the shows always have an open night right before you open your your main opening. You have a soft open, and they'll bring friends and family to, to get some reaction for mm -hmm. your cast. Since this particular show opens on Friday, March the 9th, we will have friends and family on the 8th. And we will make that available to the Rising Stars and Legends. It's on the schedule. Visitors. It is on the it's schedule. It's on the schedule. I already sent the press release yeah. out today. So the friends, there you go. <laughs> the friends and family of the cast will have uh, tickets so that they will get in first. But then it will be open seating for anyone else who's there until we fill Fun. the theater up. Fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to see that. Oh, good. So, again, this is Marita Kilgore with the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. You can get tickets, and you should hurry at theowentheater.com, and you just may be a part of the performance. That is correct. Okay, we're going to take another break and get ready for our next guest, which is Don Hampton. I'm Margie Taylor, Conroe Culture News, and this is sponsored by Kristen Bays for the 284th Court of Montgomery County. I'm Kristen Bays, and I'm running for judge of the 284th Civil District Court. Ronald Reagan once said, as government expands, liberty contracts. He's right, but there are leaders in this country who seem to have forgotten it. I'm running for judge to stop this government expansion, to restore your confidence in your elected officials. I'm inspired, involved, and invested in this community, and I know you are too. Together, we can make a difference. Please vote for Kristen Bays in the Republican primary on March 6th. Political advertising paid for by Kristen Bays in voluntary compliance with the Judicial Campaign Fairness Act. This is Rick TRC. Every Monday through Friday from 3 to 7, I play today's country hits on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star, the type of music that makes you want to get off your seat, stomp your feet, sing along at the top of your lungs, and not care who hears on Lone Star Community Radio, Conroe's FM 104.5. 106.1 and as always on worldwide irlonestar.com Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and on irlonestar.com Start your own podcast create your first YouTube channel and be on TV Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. And we're back. I'm Archie Taylor, the host of Conroe Culture News. 
and this is February 26th, Monday afternoon. So the second guest today will be Don Hampton, and he is the director of the Rising Stars and Legends of Texas, which will be March 4th through 10th. So Don is going to tell us a little bit about it. Well, right? good morning, Margie. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great time listening to you and Marita out there. Uh, Rising Stars and Legends Texas, great event. We've just entering our second year. We're coming up on it very quickly. Um, last year was a two-day or actually about a day and a half event. This week, it's a full six days from a Sunday all the way through the following Saturday with lots of events happening on Saturday. But we have nine venues this year and uh, just an incredible amount of talent in just about every uh, genre you can think from you know, music and painting, uh, it, it, music alone, we've got like five or six different types of music, from Americana to classic and jazz and gospel. So and choral. It, yeah, choral. <laughs> Instrumental. You name it. You name it. We, we've got <laughs> jazz, that music genre covered. a little of everything. Little and of everything. there's a little gospel, too. Isn't that with well, Wanda now, and now Grace? Miss, Is Miss, that gospel? Which one? Wanda and Grace. Wanda and Grace is gospel. They were okay. with us last year, and we thought, boy, we've got to get these guys back. They were really fabulous. Good. And you know, there's such a such a talented family, and it basically it is a family. Uh, Wanda Devereaux was in a show of mine over at the Owen many years ago uh, to kill a mockingbird. She put together the the uh, choir for us that sang in intermissions, and was also very much a part of the Black Gallery that was there in the courthouse. So they're great friends. Nice. So of course, the big startup is the the Texas Tenors on March the 4th, right? That is the opening big event. The Texas Tenors appearing with the string section of the Conroe Symphony Orchestra uh, a late Sunday afternoon matinee at that's 4 That's next o'clock. Sunday. This that's, next that's Sunday. That's coming right up. Rocking that's in. Right. And you know, I've been watching the weather pretty closely lately. <laughs> and it looks like Sunday is going to be a beautiful day. All so right. we're, we're all psyched about that. Uh, I, there's just so many things going on. Uh, actually, the day before, uh, the Conroe Art League is going to kick off their national art exhibition and competition, and they will be opened and a part of this festival all week long with several receptions and some of their guest artists appearing in other uh, events. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and especially on Saturday. There is just a whole lot going on, a lot of it all at different venues between the Owen Theater Founders Plaza Park, the Art Gallery, the Corner Pub. I mean, there's just there's constant flow of things going on. And then the big hoopla party is afterwards that Susie's going to tell us about here shortly. But it all calls. So it starts at the Crichton and it ends at the Crichton. It starts at the Crichton, the Crown Jewel of Montgomery County, and it ends at the Crichton. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful space. The, the acoustics in there are incredible. And particularly for, a, for, for an event like the Young Texas Artists, where most of them are working acoustically. Uh, you know, we, we have heard from many performers who have performed there that they love to come to the Crichton because their words can be heard. And these are people that usually are so loud that you never can hear their words. But in the, in the Crichton, it's, it's quite easy to bring the instrumentation down and bring the artist's voice up, and it's well heard. So it's a great venue. But we've got things happening all week, too. I mean, we, we kick off Monday with our own Debbie Glenn uh, appearing in, at the Red Brick Tavern. Debbie was, was awarded a singer, uh, a songwriter for Best Country uh, New Song of the Year by the Texas Country Music Association. So we're, we're all excited to hear Debbie perform that. Then <laughs> we just move right on through the week. We've got things. Tuesday, uh, the, the Players Kids and the uh, Stage Right are both doing things uh, in the evening. Uh, the Players Theater Company's Sea Kids radio show will be performed uh, live at the Owen Theater at 5 o'clock. And then at 7, Stage Right is presenting two short films, one on the history of the Crichton Theater and then another on the Bonnie and Clyde in Texas. So that should be interesting. Oh, yeah. One thing I'm really, really looking forward to, because I've never seen him perform before, is Cecil Shaw over at the Pacific Yard. Rhythm and Blues, that's right. I have never Motown. Heard, I've <laughs> never heard him, but I, I, that, that's my job. That's a great venue, too. 
It is a good venue, and, and the acoustics, again, they're, they're great. really wonderful. And they bring in a crowd. They've done a first-class job on renovating that place. I did a show there many years ago before it had a roof, and it was Oh, yes. You know, it was, it was it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah they just was, had their ribbon cutting last week. Uh, yeah, I saw that. that. But, you know, the, the Young Texas Artist is, is probably the most mm, well-known event that we right. have here in Conroe, outside, of course, of the Catfish Festival. But we all love the Catfish Festival, but this is special. I mean, this has been going on 35, 36, is this 36 years for them? I don't know. It's either Susie's going to tell us, I'm it's, sure. It's, it's a long, long-running gig. But it they, brings people in from all from over. From all over. And, and the talent is just amazing. And uh, last year I was blown away. It was the first time I really had an opportunity to see large portions of the program. And everything that I saw was just uh, spectacular in terms of, you know, the performance mm -hmm. uh, level that these young folks were at. Mm -hmm. So what are you most looking forward to besides the two beginning and ending concerts? I mean, there's going to be the Chalk Up Conroe, as simple as that, you know, doing artistic work that anybody can do for free out on the sidewalks there at the park. That will be to, great. They always do a you great know, job. Yes, it, it's amazing stuff, and it stays for a very long time, even right. through and, rain and that. Know, it still stays on there. On Saturday, right opening things up for us is while Chalk Up uh, Conroe is going on, the, uh, the Jazz Connection will be setting up there in Founders Park, and they'll kick off the day for us with some good big band jazz. You know, the the, uh, the library, the county library will be out there with some activities for children. Uh, and then, you know, we move straight through the afternoon on Saturday going, uh, well, we've got everything from, well, you might see a flash dance and some Aztec dancers. Is some of that going on, reading. right, right? You know, we've got poetry readings from the Literary Society. And one thing that you ask what I enjoy, last year we did a panel discussion with five different people in very different genres of art. And that was, to me, that was one of the most interesting things that happened last year. Uh, this year, we've got a great lineup of panelists uh, and, and somewhat legendary people in their own genre, and a lot of different genres represented. And Dave Parsons, our own uh, Texas Poet Laureate from 2011, will be the uh, host of that and will be the moderator. So uh, that's, that's going to be a fun one. That's happening at the Corner Pub, I believe, at 1 or 2. Let me see. They're on Saturday. Uh, 2 o'clock Saturday at the Corner Pub, uh, they'll be out there. Uh, it's hard to remember all the times of things. There's so many activities, especially on Saturday. And really the best way for people to follow up on it is to go to the Facebook page, which is Greater Conroe Arts Alliance, or the website, which is the same name, Greater Conroe Arts Alliance. Yes. How about that? Just keeping it straight because there's so many activities. And, again, they're free. You can come in, join it, and I think we're going to be having uh, some food trucks out there or something. Yeah, some, also, some local, uh, local will downtown be, will be merchants will be selling food down there at the park. And you can just go and wander from place to place with no, no fee, no charge. There's also going to be the... Plain air painters. Tell me Plain what air that is. Painters. That's that's what people just come out and set up their easels on the sidewalk and paint whatever they happen to see at that time. Uh, we also have a, a poetry slam on Friday night uh, at the Conroe Coffee House right next door here. So that's a, that's a good one. Earlier that evening, uh, local talent uh, Shelley Cooley will be appearing right at five o'clock, right after work, followed by Wanda and Grace, the gospel group that you were mentioning before. Mm -hmm. So just lots and lots of things going on. Just so on. much stuff. So, you know, again, uh, go on Facebook. Who doesn't have Facebook? And, and look at all the different events and say you're going or whatever so you'll remember and you'll have you that go. in and your phone. And the schedule phone. is there. Greater the Conroe schedule Arts is there. Alliance. Greater right. Conroe Arts Alliance. And, and go look over the new website. You know, the interesting thing is about this week-long event, this takes a lot of coordination on your part, right? Tell me about that. The scheduling and well, all of that. You've been working on this. We've been working on it a while. And, you know, the bad part was that I, I got very sick right in the middle and almost dropped the ball completely. I felt so uh, bad. No, but, but lots of people <laughs> jumped in. There's a lot of people involved in this. We've got a planning committee of six, eight people that have, every one of them, uh, yourself included, have really been uh, really been working to make this happen. So but it involves it 15 community. organizations. 15 nonprofits organizations are involved. That's the amazing thing. It is. You know, who would know that a sleepy little town like Conroe would have that? We're not so sleepy anymore, I don't think. No, and we're I kicking think it. the world is Going into high gear notice. next week. Yeah, absolutely. High gear. 
starting on Saturday, uh, uh, I'm sorry, starting on Sunday, uh, we cannot miss the Texas Tenors with members of the Symphony Have you looked at that? Is that starting to sell out? Uh, as what I hear, the tickets are going quickly. Okay, so, and you can get those at CrichtonTheater.com, no, dot .org, I believe. I believe it's CrichtonTheater.org. And uh, like Marita was saying, they will have the um, family and friends night that Thursday, first come, first served, and that's on uh, March the 8th. It's on March so, the 8th, and we really want to thank Marita and the players because that, that usually is close to just family and friends, and she's agreed to open it up to our public mm -hmm. for that night once she seats the family and friends. Uh, it's, it's, it'll, it's, it's a great little show. I've, I've seen it before, and it's, I'm sure they'll do a great job with it. They just keep raising the bar over there every time I see a show. There's just so much fun going on that week. Yeah. And, you know, the really neat thing is that even the, the jazz connection, the kids that are playing and that, you get to see what they're doing. It makes them feel good. But you get a little sample of all the different organizations and what they contribute to Montgomery County, in particular, greater Conroe area. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to see it firsthand and then find out if you want to get involved, you know, by participating or donating or whatever, because they all, they all need our support Absolutely. to keep on. And, and that's, that's one of the primary missions of the Greater Conroe Arts Alliance is to support and promote local arts organizations. It is our hope that this festival will grow and will attract more national attention as well as statewide attention and that we will be available and be uh, what's the word? eligible for more of the larger grants for funding. Well, let's so talk about that. So there were some grants that helped fund the program, and that was the Conroe Convention and Visitors Bureau in the city of Conroe city also of Conroe. gave some uh, monies course, to help promote it because they believe in it. Absolutely. And then there were other sponsors. We, we've, and we have a great list of sponsors. Right? There's you can go to the website and see them all, Greater Conroe Arts Alliance, and see all the sponsors with their logos. So it's going to be a wonderful event, and we hope to see people there. Just wander in and come check it out. Absolutely. You'll be welcome at every spot. There'll be, uh, there'll be schedules around at every place, and all except the opening and the beginning uh, events are, are free to the public. And, uh, you know, some ticketing is available for the Young Texas artists as well as the Young Texas artists. All of this in downtown Conroe. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Don. where you will uh, see everybody at the Greater Conroe Arts Alliance, Rising Stars and Legends of Texas. I'm your host, Margie Taylor. We'll be right back. And this is sponsored by Kristen Bays for the 284th Court. Thanks, Margie. I'm Kristen Bays, and I'm running for judge of the 284th Civil District Court. Ronald Reagan once said, as government expands, liberty contracts. He's right, but there are leaders in this country who seem to have forgotten it. I'm running for judge to stop this government expansion, to restore your confidence in your elected officials. I'm inspired, involved, and invested in this community, and I know you are too. Together, we can make a difference. Please vote for Kristen Bays in the Republican primary on March 6th. Political advertising paid for by Kristen Bays and in voluntary compliance with the Judicial Campaign Fairness Act. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-647. 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. And we 
are back. I'm your host, Margie Taylor, FM 104.5, 106.1 out of downtown Conroe, Lone Star Community Radio, every Monday at noon. And wrapping it up, uh, ending the Rising Stars and Legends of Texas, we are going to talk about the Young Texas Artist Music Competition and Gala. I have here with me Susie Pekarski and Mimi Sadler. Welcome, ladies. Hey, Margie. Thanks Hello. for having us. Okay. So, you know, this has been going on for how long, Susie, the Young Texas Artist Music Competition? Oh, a long time. This is our 34th. 34th. Year. We started wow. in 1983. I don't think I knew that. Okay. So, and what exactly is it? It is a classical music competition with four divisions piano, voice, strings, and orchestral instruments. We call it winds, brass, percussion, harp, and guitar. And we're a very unique competition in Texas in that we have all four of those divisions. Uh, and there, so there's preliminary competition, which starts next week. And that's also in our schedule of things that people can go to, but they have to be very quiet. Oh. Right? Well, preliminary yes. It's, they're open auditions. Yes, uh, open auditions. It is a, uh, it's a performance competition. So mm -hmm. they're judged not only on their uh, te technique and mastery of the music, but they're judged on <coughs> how they respond to the audience. Uh, if you'd like to come to the preliminaries, uh, those rounds start uh, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and uh, that's with the strings division, and we have the strings division, and then uh, for, uh, Friday morning is the instrument division, Friday afternoon is voice, and Saturday all day is piano. And those and, are also on the Greater Conroe Arts Alliance. It's on the web page. It's on the Facebook. If people want to see the schedule of that, yeah, it's on and, there. Yeah, and too. those are free. Anybody yeah. can just come in. But, yeah, we do ask you to be quiet and not applaud <laughs> for that because the, the judges need to hear mm -hmm. everything. But um, Saturday night is the big finalist concert and awards, and that's when the two finalists from each division compete one last time in front of the big audience at the Crichton. And... Uh, that's that's the real excitement right there. It's very exciting. So the ages of the uh, participants are 18 to 30. So right. they're they're young, they're aspiring and they are also uh, studying at a Texas music school, correct? Well, uh, some of them are studying out of state, but they have a Texas residency. So uh, as long as there's a connection to, to Texas, Texas uh, like occasionally we'll have someone from you know, Juilliard or the Manhattan School or San Francisco. Different places. Different different places, but they come home to Texas to compete for the title. How many people do you get that want to be in this? I mean, how many applicants do you normally get? Oh. A lot? We have had as many as 90 applicants. That's a lot. Uh, but we only accept, um, um, well, this year we only accepted 60 contestants out of the applicants. And... Uh, but all our divisions are full, and uh, sometimes we have waiting lists to, to, uh, to compete. So when they, um, they, they apply, do they audition through their application, and then you invite them to come back for the preliminaries? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, most of them are uh, working on master's or doctorate degrees. Occasionally we have... Uh, have an under, well, we have undergraduates as well, but they're all uh, phenomenally, phenomenally talented. So it's a hard decision sometimes. It is a very hard decision, <laughs> and, and I, I don't do that at all. We have uh, some wonderful judges that we, we don't get judges from the Texas academic circles. We go to places like the Juilliard School or the Manhattan School or um, San Francisco Conservat Conservatory or... Um, very prestigious judges. Wildly acclaimed yeah. people that know yeah. Yeah. People that are inter the talent. Internationally known, right. um, that are qualified to judge. Uh, I'm certainly not qualified to, to make that decision. But we have an audience choice award. The audience typically gets very enthusiastic about their favorites. And so we let them vote for probably one of the most coveted awards is that audience choice. Uh, audience choice. And they, they, they love winning that. Mm -hmm. I've been to that. I've seen that. It's pretty nice. It's pretty cool. So uh, some of these people have been Grammy Grammy nominees and moved on to other other things, we right? Have. And this was the starting point. Well, 
Kind of. Kind of. We, we like to think of ourselves as a, a springboard for um, a fabulous career. Uh, we have a number of Grammy nominees. We have uh, some YouTube sensations. Uh, and then last year, we were terribly proud to have uh, one of our piano silver medalists go on to win the coveted uh, silver medal of the Van Cliburn International. And only two pianists from the entire United States of America even qualified for that competition. And our Kenny Broberg won it. So we were uh, really thrilled for him to represent the quality of our makes it makes it very exciting oh. makes it very worthwhile oh, we, were, we were loving it <laughs> so the prelude to that is your gala which is where Mimi's going to come in here the Bach Beethoven and barbecue right Mimi yes okay tell me about that and do you still have um, availability for people to get involved with that yes we do <clears throat> okay we and do now it does sell out quickly um, it's been just a wonderful barbecue every year and that starts at 5 p.m. on March 10th, and that's going to be at Martin's Hall here in downtown Conroe. It starts out with a reception at 5 p.m. at Martin's Hall, and where you can have cocktails and visit and view our auction items. And we have some incredible auction items. What do you have? Well, we have <laughs> our really a fabulous auction item this year is the Steinway Spirio, which is going to be auctioned off and be delivered to someone for two weeks. Now I'm going to let Susie describe what the Spirio piano is because she can do a better job. It's, we're very proud to have Steinway Pianos as our uh, new sponsor this year, a new major sponsor, and <coughs> they are letting us auction off a Spirio model, which is a, a full-fledged Steinway grand piano in every way, except that in collaboration with Apple Computers, they have made a player piano that will knock your socks off. It plays uh, music from all the Steinway artists, and uh, it plays them exactly with all the nuances and dynamics that the artists played in their performance. And so you can have this in your home, and it's a, you just have to, have to see it and hear it to believe it. Anyway, you need to go and hear it. You do, and we will have one at the gala in Martin's Hall, and you can come and of check Of course. Out. Now, and that's a big thing going to Martin's Hall, right, Mimi? Because normally yes, it's it a is. tent here in the street um, in yes, the past. Yes, <laughs> and one more thing on the Steinway piano. What comes with that is an iPad, um, and you can project onto your TV the original um, artist who is playing the piece that is being played on the Steinway Spirio. So it's quite an experience. Yes. Oh, it's awesome, and it, they have everything from country west, like Billy Joel and the Beatles, to uh, classical artists, it's just, it just it's a just wide fun. variety, and mm -hmm. very diverse. Very diverse. And some of our other auction items. Before I go on to more on the event, we have a a three bedroom townhome in Telluride um, for a weekend. A weekend in August is for four nights, and that, that is a fabulous. Um, and it's it's totally renovated and a fabulous place. Downtown. Okay. We have a Mary Frances handbag mm -hmm. that is shaped like a grand piano. Wow. And it is sequins. That sounds like something somebody needs. It's, it's really <laughs> fun. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> yeah. Now, we also have, oh, and back to the Steinway, along um, with the Steinway piano, um, during that two weeks that they have it, um, they will be given a cocktail party with hors d'oeuvres served for 10 by Red Brick Tavern, and wine donated by the new Blue Epiphany Vineyard in Conroe, which will be open in the next month. Wow, I hadn't heard about that place. Mm -hmm. It's brand new. Okay. And there will also be another dinner separate from the Spirio, a dinner and wine party for 10, also donated by Red Brick Tavern. Um, and their chef will come and cook a course, um, a fabulous gourmet meal for 10. And also I want that, too. Um, in their home. Um, yeah, there will be a royal tea fun. party for 8, 8 to mm. 10, that will be in the home of Bonnie Hanley. And I think that will be a lot of fun. Yeah. And there is also a donation from a, the new bed and breakfast that is called the Historic Hill House, which is 30 minutes east of Conroe in San Jacinto County. And mm. it is an historical farmhouse. And it has a 
as an historical registry, and it has been totally renovated. It looks fabulous. Um, there is a website on it now where you can look at the pictures. It's a historic hill house. And in addition to the house, there are two cabins. Um, we call them cabins, but they're, they're really a scale cabin, which have two complete separate bedrooms and bath areas. Those could be a family adventure. A family event. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, the auction item itself is for two couples for one night. But it's going to okay. be a wonderful thing for our community. This is our best year ever for auction items, and uh, every single one of them is something that I want. <laughs> so, uh, Isn't that always the case? Everybody needs to come and, and bid on them. <laughs> and there is also a painting um, oh, oh, yes. by Nicolee McCowan, who is a local artist, and it is an incredible wildflower painting. If you've seen one. any of our advertising or posters, it's it's the one on the poster. The poster yeah. is beautiful. I'm looking at one right here. And it is it is really cool with the wildflowers, all the colors. And again, it's called Bach, Beethoven, and Barbecue. Have you always had this for 34 years, this no, prelude? No, the Bach, Beethoven, and Barbecue Gala was started about seven years ago. So it, that's, just, that's just the... But that includes the finalist concert and awards. If right. You, if you come to the gala, the barbecue, then then you okay. automatically get you preferred are, seating at in. the concert. And the dress is anywhere from oh. jeans to gowns, right, Mimi? Oh, yeah. yes. Now, and we did not say Mimi, you and uh, Garlane Kelly. Garlane and um, Emmett Kelly and Barb and I are co-chairing it. You're co-chairing it. So they've done a fantastic job. This well, is going to be the did. best party of the year. Combined they like with the galas. Finest I've had them help me with galas before. Oh yeah. <laughs> They just own it. Yeah. <laughs> After the reception, we will be going into the Grand Pavilion tent out in front of Martin's Hall to have an upscaled barbecue. To okay. Go along with our Bach, Beethoven, and barbecue theme. Very nice. And the silent auction, not silent, the live auction will be held at that time. And then we attend the concert and then, you and then go to the back concert. to the Grand Pavilion for dancing and dessert and champagne. And the desserts are donated by the Conroe Services, and they have done that very grateful for it, and they've been very hospitable to the guests. What a way to end a wonderful week of the rising stars and legends of Texas, starting at the Crichton, ending at the Crichton, and then dancing and dessert and fun in the street, basically. Yes, and we do. <laughs> the band is the Bill Moak and the Highway 105 band, and they were featured yesterday in the Conroe Courier. Okay, anything else, lady? Oh, tell them where they can get tickets. Oh, um, either the Crichton box office or at our website, youngtexasartists.org. Uh, or you can call me or Mimi. Uh, and I'd just like to ha thank our fabulous sponsors. Uh, we have Spirit of Texas Bank, Steinway Pianos, uh, UBS Financial Services, uh, Susan Love Fitz. Uh, let's see, did I say Houston Public Media, Spirit of Texas Bank? Um, Oh, well, many great sponsors that we're so grateful to for, for helping us out. So you can go to ytamc.com and find out more information. You can get tickets still, and you can go to the CrichtonTheater.org to get um, your tickets to the final show. Right, and if you can't come to the barbecue, you can just come to the concert only. Those tickets are $28. And, and it's a fun time. It's a fun time, and if you... Uh, go to Rising Stars and Legends, uh, you can uh, show your wristband and get them free. So it's a good deal. Okay, I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News, and this was sponsored by Kristen Bays for the 284th Court of Montgomery County. Go vote! <laughs>Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcasts, Channel 12, Our City TV, and Conroe, or Channel 21 KVQT in Houston, and of course their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? 
Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.